And so in practice, what we've ended up with is not this idea of coming up with a good partitioning for the input domain, but rather the notion of test coverage. And what test coverage is doing is it's trying to accomplish exactly the same thing that partitioning was accomplishing, but it goes about it in a different way. Test coverage is an automatic way of partitioning the input domain based on observed features of the source code. So let me say what I mean. So one particular kind of test coverage that we might aim for, and this is sort of an easy kind of test coverage, is called function coverage. And function coverage is achieved if we manage to test our system in such a way that every function in our source code gets executed during testing. We're going to be dividing our input domain into chunks where any test case in this part of the input space is going to result, for example, in a call to foo. So now there's going to be some different subset of our input domain. And any point in this subset of the input domain, when used as a test input, is going to result in a different function in the system under test, let's say var being called. We can keep subdividing the input domain for the software under test until we've split it into parts that result in every function being called. So now, of course, doing this in theory is easy. In practice, we start with a set of test cases, and we run them all through the software under test. We see which functions are called, and then we're going to end up with some sort of a score. So for example, some sort of a tool that's watching our software execute can say, well, we've called 181 out of 250 functions. And so what this kind of a score is called is a test coverage metric. It means that our test cases so far have covered 181 of the functions out of the 250 that we implemented. And so now that we've achieved this goal that we had, which is assigning a score to a collection of test cases, the next thing we have to ask is, is this score any good? Is that good test coverage to have executed 181 out of our 250 functions? Well, in this example, it's probably not. So what we can do is for each of the functions that wasn't covered, we can go and look at it. And we can try to come up with a test input that causes that function to execute. If there's some function baz here, and we can't seem to devise an input that causes it to execute, then there are a couple of possibilities. One possibility is, is that it can't be called at all. It's dead code. Another possibility is, is that we simply don't understand our system well enough to be able to trigger it. Either way, there's something possibly suspicious or wrong. 